This has been the most requested song I have ever had. By far. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowen University. I figured we should start 2024 out on a rather epic note, and based on your comments, this track is sure to hit the mark. I'm very intrigued by this one because I'm getting a crash course in real time here with you guys on the punk scene. It's been really fun. But many of you are commenting that this is the greatest punk rock song of all time. I've seen that comment many times. So I'm very intrigued. I know this is a super long track, but I did not know it was an entire EP. So you guys have tricked me into doing a full album reaction without me knowing it. But we are too far in, I suppose, now. Um, but The Decline is an EP by NoFX released in 1999. The CD version consisted of one 18-minute track. And to date, NoFX has released 15 studio albums, 17 EPs, and even more singles. That is a crazy amount of music. Let's get to it. I feel a little bit of pressure. Fat Mike himself saw my last video on The Idiots Are Taking Over, so no pressure, Mark. But thank you guys for helping me pick the right version. We're going to do the studio version. You guys unanimously voted here to do that instead of the live version at Red Rocks, which would be fun in the future. But without further ado, let's get to it. The Decline by NoFX. Oh. Oh, oh. Holy shit. That's cool. I'm not going to pause as much as normal. I'm going to try to get through its long song, but I love, and just already just really cool colorful chords going down A, then we had that inversion, the uh, going down to the B flat, then the A, that chromatic walk down is really cool. It's pretty epic. Now the sea. A flat thrown in. Oh, here's that kind of catchy, poppy thing. I love this. So far, it's really in your face. It started out with this really epic. It just sounded like a start to like a orchestral suite. I don't know the 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 big epic hits, punk rock. So far, from what I've heard, is just like ah, just in your face really fast. And this is in that mode now. But I like how it had this just epic feel. I mean, for an 18 minute track, I'm sure it's kind of broken up in some movements. I've seen your comments on that too. That bass tone in the beginning was really really great. I don't want to rewind too much and make this too long. I'm sure some bass. Gems and ear candy will show up again, but already the same things I'm hearing from the idiots are taking over. Just really good pivot chords, out of key chords that just bring it back to the tonal center. There's an A flat thrown in while we're in like C major here. I love that from the last track. I'm I'm sure in this epic nature of this track, that stuff will crop up more. But this is really interesting so far, and I'm really digging Fat Mike's vocals. It's got a really just pleasing tone to his voice and the phrasing. I'm not paying attention to the lyrics too much, but you guys are saying he's a real wordsmith, so I'm going to try to pay attention to that. Let's keep going. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, thrashy. The 
this is really cool. That quarter note triplet, dun 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 dun. I love when you're driving, dun 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 dun, and you throw in those quarter note triplets. You get a two against three kind of feel. It just kind of breaks up that pace for a minute and almost re grabs your attention back to that downbeat. Listen to that effective that is. You're going along like this. It brings you back in. Ooh, that bass is mixed real hot there. I didn't really hear it stick out too much in that last phrase, but he's really venturing up into some octaves now. Just moving around. I like that movement. Oh god, here's is that that triplet picking thing? The Christians love their guns. Whoa. The church and an array. Pray ah. for the salvation. Pray on the lower face. The story book been Okay, this is that triplet picking thing. Fat Mike himself commented on an elaborator. This is a two-string triplet. This was sprinkled very lightly into the idiots are taking over. And every time I started to hear it, it just went away. So it was kind of sprinkled in. They're actually kind of riffing on it this time. Now I can kind of dissect it. And I'm not going to stop here too long. I did go back. Some of you guys shared a link that showed him playing it. I clicked a few of those. I did not listen to the decline until now, but I went back and watched some live versions of him playing Idiots are taking over to see that. I don't have a 0.6 pick. It's across the room over there. I got to dig it out of my pig pick thing. But this is kind of like 0.73. I practiced this technique a little bit before filming this. So it's upstroke on the D string, down on the D string, and then downstroke on the G string, and then starting with an upstroke. So it's, it's weird to think about. So now he's kind of moving it up here more like in a fifth interval. I hear like D kind of power chord. The wrist motion is very weird. It's a circular kind of flow. I'm not very good with a pick in that manner, but I, I, I do want to wrap my head around that technique. It would be fun to try to cover one of these songs and try a new technique I've never learned. But I'm hearing it really isolated here. It's just got this crystal clear glassiness to it that just... I don't know. It's just, it's weird that he's known for this. I love when a bass player is known for like one specific thing that nobody else is really doing. That's just like a true sign of artistry to me. You know, I talk about that in the corn video a lot with Fieldy. He gets flack, his bass playing and technique are polarizing, but damn, if he isn't known for that sound and the way he plays it, that that's just something all artists strive to you know, get to at that point where you're just known for that one thing and the way you influence the sound of your music is so much bigger than what you're writing. So props to that, because this doesn't crop up a lot anymore, but I really like that he is just like coined that thing that is really unique to him. Let's keep going. Fast. Whoa! Real quick before we get into that section, he's kind of doing that. It almost reminds me of like the Black Hole Sun chord progression because he's going. Those third inversions. Of walk that all the way down chromatically and it never quite resolves but it reminds me of the black hole it's kind of like black hole sun but that chromatic 
walking down the bass note, but leaving the fifth where it is. So you kind of spread out the fifth down to another fifth, drop the bass note by one half step. You almost go all the way down. Okay. We've jumped into a whole new, another new section here. That's a huge 90 degree turn. Let's jump in. Whole different sound. Almost like Led Zeppelin's Ramble On, you know? Love that E major here. Only genre of music with jump scares. Mm, we got the radio thing, radio effect. Kind of sticking in E, so new section, I suppose. It's hard to enjoy yourself while bleeding out the ass. It's been 17 fun years of being someone's bitch. To the beat. So we're up in E major now. It's kind of the same intervals chord progression wise as earlier <clears throat> maybe a few subtle differences but earlier in the song it was kind of like that one six now we're going nice resolves again I'm gonna give some props real quick quick for the drums man the guy has chops just i can hear the hi-hat nuances just keeping up with these left turns obviously it's a studio recording doesn't matter the guy can play i, I mean just the hi-hat work is really grabbing me every time these little breaks happen don't know much about the drummer don't know much about the band except for the bass player and vocalist mike but everybody in this band sounds like a just a keen super talented musician and i read that and another comment, I've got a lot of like comment notes pulled up here because you guys helped me kind of do these videos, but the guitar player is responsible for a lot of the really musical stuff in their songs. I don't know who the primary writer is, but they all just sound amazingly fit for what they're writing. It's just so well done. I love these just tempo changes. Back to this part. Ooh. That is a, I knew they were going to go to that minor four there. They did this in the other song too. That is so, let me let it play again. I'll explain. E. That is a secondary dominant if I've ever heard one. It has to be because it goes. E7, which resolves down to the one, which would be A, which isn't the one, but it's kind of like a fake one. So we got, let's see if I can play it up here. We change that E major to E7. This is five of five. And we go down to A. Now we have the minor four. So we take A major and make it A minor. Really interesting. I think that's what that's doing there. Let me hear it again. Sorry, I went back a little far. I 
That's a gnarly guitar tone, too. Make it the, make it minor. Cool. That's clever. So many good melodies can go in that little thing there. Right? Sounds like a trombone. I made comments in the Rancid and the Operation Ivy reactions I did that I just like horns and punk. If that's ska, ska punk, third wave of ska, I, I still don't have a full grasp on what starts and what ends where. I'm a horn player. I play trumpet for the last 20 years, so I just I love the addition to... Uh, of the addition of horns to this heavier, intense music. It just adds such a, a jovial, vibrant feel to it. Sounds like a trombone to me, unless that's something I'm not thinking of, but uh, I love the texture it adds on top of this. It just seems like the way punk music so in your face, you have this kind of depth behind you where the horns come in and just add a lot of layers, but it differs in tonality and timbre so much from the guitars and the bass. I just love the, the sonic cocktail that makes. So many different feels thrown in. This is really epic. A weird groove here. Cool bass effect. Wow. She left her answering my this is like a musical, like straight up, just so many different feels and genres. We had that like Zeppelin-y kind of breakdown thing. It almost reminded me of Ramble On, like the exact bass line. I guess just because it's an E major. Knee-jerk tempo shifts, you know, mellow, then in your face. And now we've got this swung thing here. It's got like a, a theater musical kind of approach to the composition, which I've done a lot of theater work in my day, and I've always appreciated how it can all be orchestrated together and sound like one homogenous piece. This is a certainly a most epic punk rock song I've ever heard, bar none. I haven't heard a lot, but it's going to be tough to top this one. I love the feel of this section. Let's go into it. My shuffle. little bass thing. Whatever that was, that was cool. A little melody thrown in, that's so catchy. Guys, I'm loving this. This is something else. Crazy. just all that just kind of growly you know going around two three notes at the bottom there the bass fills when thrown in are just done at such 
like intelligent places driving into a new section. It's not overdone. And they'll, we'll, there will go like 30 seconds or a minute where I'm not really hearing the bass other than just a background roll, which is totally fine. But he'll come out and just be in the spotlight for a second in a new way every five minutes. You know, earlier it was that circular picking thing. Then there was some just really melodies down here. Now there's like some kind of growly, like Billy Sheehan-esque type stuff where he's just kind of going on a couple notes, growling underneath everything. I love the variety of approaches just on bass already. Just so good. Kind of back in C now. Even, whoa, even more stuff. It's so much. What is going on there? That's like a like pick slap bass kind of thing. One more time. That, that's a cool phrasing. Something up here. It's, it's just... You know, the picking sounds really intense to me. Wow. It's just a bizarre phrasing. So cool. I love that. Okay, probably moving into a new section. Real quick, something I'm noticing too is that even on sections where the bass is just doing driving eighth notes following the chord progression, it's not jumping out doing anything lead-esque, I feel like there's times where Mike bass player will dig in harder and it's like you can hear each individual note instead of kind of just a going on with the chord progression it's like those little bits of dynamics he's adding i kind of hear it at the end of phrases where he'll dig in more and it's like the bass just kind of jumps out jumps out at me but it didn't change its part necessarily just a great use of how it was recorded in my mind the dynamics it just feels very real and live it doesn't feel very copy paste and copying pasting you know lots of bands do it it's just the nature of the studio and digital recording but you know i love the variation you know i used to hear this a lot in older music where like the second verse a guitar player on any chorus i mean i can think of so many bands where they just strum a little differently and if you listen to the song enough times you kind of notice those nuances that just makes recording sound very real and raw to me like just no frills, I like that. That's just kind of a dynamics thing I'm noticing so far in the bass. I have no idea what I'm in store for for these last seven minutes, because I've been surprised at every angle so far. This is kind of like the beginning a little bit. Kind of the way the song started. <laughs> My camera's running out of time. This happens sometimes. Starting and stopping. There we go.
this certainly has every element of any of the greatest prog rock epics and suites, but just in a punk rock mode. I've never heard anything like this before. that swelling kind of guitar maybe oh that's just the note choices are so good going a flat to e flat or e Then they go to this, back to A-flat minor. They go to this C here. I did it a second ago. Let's see if it comes back. Here. So smooth. I was expecting a jump scare that time because it's happened so many times. It didn't get me this time. such an effective thing the na na na's when you put that in a song i mean this is genre spanning it doesn't it's not punk anything those na na na's when the voice becomes more of just like an instrument figure sans words it's such an effective way to just drive home the chord progression the melody it just made me instantly pay attention to what he wasn't saying after hearing lyrics as weird as that sounds because i'm not too focused on the lyrics it, there's so much great music going on i haven't even listened and i'm always focused on the music first but that really grabbed me in when he stopped saying words. It's just an effective songwriting thing. Love that. They went somewhere here. Now we're in D minor E. Let me hear. I can't do the math that quick on my head. C major, D minor, E major, F major. It's modal, I think. I don't want to take up time trying to figure it out. But it was such a subtle change in tonality from just that last part. I'm saying, guys, like one chord can make all the difference. It just pulls my ear a little over here, and I don't know why. I'm not going to spend a ton of time trying to figure it out, but that's, I'm just complimenting the songwriting, I suppose. It's really evident with this band. I did not expect this at all. Did not. Unless they're just doing a major three chord, because in the key of C major, the Phrygian mode is the third mode. You start on, you play a C major scale starting on E. But the normal three in a minor, uh, I'm sorry, the normal three in a major key is minor. So in the key of C major, E minor would be the third, but they're making it major, which gives them a lot of like ways to pivot. Maybe it's confusing. Maybe I overthought it. But it just adds a lot of color to the, the sequence of those chords. So it could just be something as simple as making the three major, but it allows them to kind of piggyback off of that 
that major third in the key of C, which adds a G sharp because E major has G sharp as the third. G sharp is not in the key of C. They could pivot to an A minor that way for something really cool. Minor four. Wow, I, that that was so cool. I've heard a minor four in this song before. It's when you take the major four chord, you make it minor, and that half step. It's like two of the notes in the chord go down a half step, which makes the one resolve so well. They've heard, done did it in the idiots taking over. They've done it here, but artists will use that chord progression sequence, if you will, on pivotal emotive moments in a song. I've heard this a lot over the years, different bands and such. But notice how he said the decline right as it resolved. Perfect. Listen to this. That is so good. Like all the music and the chords, and it's like just really emotionally resonating with me. Like, I don't know what song it would take for me to cry on camera. I'm not really a, a crier. I just feel the colors and the way it's woven all together. It's just very impactful. This is awesome. I'm so glad you guys more or less made me check this out because this has every element I like. Um, great musicality, great dynamics. I'm a huge progressive music fan. This is so progressive in a way to me. It's got that, just the orchestration, the, the multi-part suite aspect to it. Bands like Dream Theater and Rush, but it's just so much more like fun and intense and it's not super, super deep like Rush's Hemispheres or something is. This is just like a, I don't know. It's just such a perfect blend of two worlds of things I like and something new involved. So thank you guys. Is that like a bunch of claps or stomps or I don't know. It's, it's just like really driving the song kind of here on my, my right side. So epic. Core progression. Wow. A 
up a whole step. It's the sneakiest jump to up a whole step. Wow, just an epic ending. I'm freaking speechless. This might genuinely be the greatest blind listen I've ever done in the past year. This is reaction video number 88 since I started this January 10th of 2023. This is, I've never responded to a piece of music this way. And granted, you know, it could be unfair to some tracks that are three and four minutes I'm hearing for the first time. It's kind of over before it's done, but this had a fair chance with almost 20 minutes, but I've just never heard anything like this. This is single-handedly something I'm going to go listen to again. Um, and I, I've done that with other bands, but th this takes the cake for me. You guys know what's up. You guys know what's up. Recommending me this hundreds of times in the past two weeks, and you delivered. I can't thank you enough for just exposing me to this. And as I said at the beginning of the video, my journey in punk rock is I'm late to the game. And while I do know some, I feel like there's just a whole world I haven't listened to yet. And it's going to be hard to top this, but I know there's so many shades of punk and ska punk and things you're recommending. I'm reading your requests. I'm writing them down. Stay tuned because they're coming soon. Thank you guys so much for spending this very long video. You could have been doing a lot of other things with your time, but you're hanging out with me, checking out No Effects is the Decline. Please make sure you like the video, subscribe. I'm now on Patreon if you want to support me further in all things Lowen University, patreon.com slash University. And a laughable amount of content I'm posting every month. I'm putting bass lessons, tracks, licks. I'm archiving old content, new reactions you can't find on YouTube for many reasons and more. So come check it out over there. Regardless, you watching these videos is the support that I love the most. So thank you so much. I love you all. I really mean that. Cheers. We will see you next time.